All right, so uh, welcome to the webinar. My name is Mary Poplin, and Martin Brennan is also here. Martin Brennan is our product manager. I am our product specialist at Imagineer Systems. Ooh. <laughs> and we're, we're going to be going over um, Mocha V4, a first look. So I'm going to go over the new Mocha um, Plus, and Martin Brennan is going to go over Mocha Pro. We're going to talk about all of the new things inside of what makes our Mocha V4 release. Now we're going to go over here to Mocha Plus, and we're going to talk a little bit about this tool. A uh, couple of things that you'll notice right away, uh, we definitely have changed our interface. Now the interface is not madly changed. We still have our layer controls over here and our layer properties, all that good stuff. Um, but what we have changed, you will notice, is our clip tab. Our clip tab now supports multi-view clips, which is to say stereo clips, left eyes and right eyes. And you can basically get access to all of that right here when you create a new file. It's the same sort of thing. Here, I'll just hit don't save right quick. And I'll show you, you can import a clip, and then once you've imported a clip, you can actually um, add another clip as well. So that's what multi-view means uh, inside of Mocha Pro V4. Now I'm going to show you, um, I'm going to, I'm going to show you Mocha Plus though, so hold on. Let me go back to my shot whenever it wants to load, because of course we're doing a webinar, so things are going to be a little slow. Um, uh, one of the things I want to point out is your... Can cover the, uh, the multi-stream workflow. Yes, you're going to cover... We've got a bit of a delay, yay. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're going to be covering that multi-stream workflow when we go through the uh, stereo, so uh, we'll uh, let you know what that is, but there is a slight delay because I'm talking from Australia and Mary is talking from Los Angeles, so... Right, so bear with us. Um, <laughs> anyway, um, what I do want to point out is that we will open V3 files inside of Mocha V4. So if you need to, uh, if you need to convert V3 files to Mocha V4, they will open um, inside of V4, but they will convert to the new V4 type of file, which means, unfortunately, these files are not backwards compatible from V4 to V3. But that's only because we've changed the way we handle clips. So that's a pretty important and, and uh, drastic change. Now, we've also had some general performance improvements. What you'll notice is that Mocha is very, very fast. All right. And, excuse me. And uh, so let's get started. Now, this works the same way it's always worked. Basically, we have our layer controls, and, you know, we can still move them around if we want to. We can lock our uh, layout if we need to. And we can go ahead and um, roto the same way that we've always rotoed. So let's talk a little bit about Mocha's planar tracker. The same great planar tracker that we've always had does not work any different. So I'm just going to go ahead and select all these layers and hide them right quick. We're just going to turn all of these off with our multi-selection. All right, what we're going to do is we're going to come over here and we are going to roto this shot. So we're, well, we're going we're gonna to track her face. I'm not going to make you sit through me rotoing this entire shot, but we're going to talk about the exports and tracking in general. So what we have here is the same great planar tracker we've always had. What it does is you draw a shape around the plane that you want to track. Now, in this case, I'm drawing the plane around the front of her face because that gives me the most information. Okay. And we're going to go ahead and track translation, scale, rotation, shear, and perspective. Now we're tracking perspective because she's tilting her head in Z space. And if you've watched any of our previous videos um, or any of our previous webinars, I'm not going to go through all of these settings because I, I feel like we've covered that really extensively in previous videos. But what you want to know is that you need to track translation, scale, and rotation. Translation is just your basic translation. Scale is really obvious, okay? And rotation is really obvious. Skew and perspective are, well, shear and perspective is a little different. Shear is essentially a skew, okay? And perspective is that tilting in Z space that her head is fixing to do. Um, usually the amount of minimum pixels that Mocha gives you is a, an accurate enough solve. Uh, Mocha is pretty good at guessing how much this number needs to be. The smaller the shape, the higher this number needs to be. The larger the shape, the smaller that number needs to be because basically pixel accuracy inside of Mocha is based on how many pixels you're tracking. So we're going to track her face forward here. And what you're going to notice is Mocha is going to stick right on. Okay, and Mocha's sticking right on because it's a planar tracker now. Um, for those of you that have never used our products before, a planar tracker is something that tracks a pattern of pixels as they move relative to one another in one direction. Okay, and that sounds like a mouthful, but really all it means is a pattern that's like just moving in one direction. All right, so I'm going to come over here. We're going to adjust this roto shape, and what I'm going to show you about rotoscoping inside of Mocha is that it's very fast. So let's say I wanted to just 
roto her face here and just get a really nice shape around her skin because let's say we wanted to do, I don't know, a color correction here. What we're going to do is we're going to adjust that shape and it's going to tween between the shape we originally made. So we're going to adjust this shape. We're going to pull her chin up here. All right. And we're going to move this down along her hairline. What you're going to notice is that from here, all I need to do is correct between these two shapes. And what's nice is this almost doesn't need correction. So we're going to wait till her chin comes all the way down. We're going to correct this shape here. And now in three keyframes, we've done a really nice articulated shape around her face. So um, one of the things I want to point out here is, so what's the difference between this and, for instance, After Effects' new um, mask tracker. Uh, the difference is, is we don't bake the keyframes in, and the, the After Effects um, mask tracker does. It's a great tool. It's a great tool for garbage mats, but it's not going to be a great tool for organic, articulate, detailed roto. So also, we don't bake our keys into this. We can actually continue to change the keyframes based on the mocha, mocha tracking data um, and continue to alter the shape without baking in the keyframes. Basically, we just do the tricky stuff. You know, we can unlink um, this mask from itself. We can unlink it from the back wall if we need to tr tr uh, track the back wall. And we can also do, like, multi-layered track mats. So we're a little bit more complex. If you need to do garbage mats, uh, keep using the mask tracker. It's a wonderful, wonderful tool. But if you need to get, you know, a little bit more, um, a little bit more articulate with your shapes, you want to use Mocha uh, for that. Now, what does this look like when we, uh, when we export it? Okay, well, let's talk a little bit about that. We can export a couple of different things. Um, let's say that we wanted to export all the roto for this girl. Let's just go ahead and turn all of these on. All right, what we're going to do is we're going to basically go through here and we're going to turn off the layers that we don't need. So screen track is kind of a chunky um, a chunky uh, shape that I don't need and screen holdout. Those are not nice roto shapes and here we're going to call this face. Okay, so if I want to export these, okay, I just basically select on the layers that I want to export. Let's just go over here and show you what they, they all look like. You can see I have all of these here. If I want to check out my mats, I can turn on my mats and we can go to here and select all mats, turn them on and see how this looks inside of our shot, just so we know. All right, and from here what we can do is we can go to our track tab, we go to export shape data, and we can do all visible layers or selected layers or all layers. I'm going to do all visible layers, and we're going to go ahead and copy this right to the clipboard, and we're going to go over to After Effects. After Effects load because it's a giant memory hog. Come here, After Effects. Don't embarrass me in front of my demos. Okay, so here's, here's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and I'm going to turn this layer on so that you can see what this looks like. And we're going to go to Edit, and we're going to go to Paste Mocha Mask. And what that will do is that will give me all of my masks articulated right on my, um, my layer. Okay, the other thing we can do is we can go to, let's just drag this new frame down. We can also go to Edit, Paste, and what that does is something completely different. That actually makes effects on the layer that you have a little bit more control over, and that also do things like respect the edge feathering, um, if any, that we did inside of Mocha. So what I mean by edge feathering is if I need to take her face, and let's just turn our mats off for a second. We're going to only do selected mats. So let's say I wanted to roto her face here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in so you can see. We can actually do things like um, change the feathered edge of this um, of these points. So let's go to here and let's pick inner. And now you can see we can mask a soft edge into our roto shapes. Uh, one of the things you'll notice is that this tool has changed. Uh, we now have a drop down mem uh, menu for you to be able to select uh, whether or not you're picking both, picking the edge, picking the inner, or picking any point. Okay? So that's how that works. Now the other thing I want to show you guys is the export, um, the export to Premiere. So we can take these same great shapes um, that we are used to taking back and forth to After Effects and we can export them to Mocha. So let's go to Export Shape Data and let's do All Visible Layers and let's actually do Adobe Premiere Shape Data. We're going to select that. You can also do Final Cut as well, but we're not going to show that today. Um, and this is 
for the record, guys, this is Final Cut um, 7. Final Cut 10, like Final Cut X, uh, we don't have an export for yet, but we do have Slice X and Track X, which are not part of Mocha Plus or Mocha Pro. They're third-party developed uh, pieces of software that license our planar tracker and put it actually inside of Final Cut 10, Final Cut X, right? So, um, so we don't have an export for that yet, but we do have Adobe Premiere, so we're going to copy that to the clipboard. And we're going to go over to Premiere. Let's watch this would behave. All right, there we go. And in Premiere, we can paste this on. Now, the way this works is we essentially take our clip that we want to paste onto. All right. And what we do is we select it. We go to our effect controls. We go to opacity. Okay. And we go to edit, paste. And now we have all of our articulated shapes inside of Premiere um, very, very quickly and easily. So this is going to be if you have to do any complex roto for any sort of complex compositing um, inside of Premiere. All right, so let's get rid of this and let's move on. Um, the other thing I want to talk about is our exports. So let's say that we wanted to track this screen here. Now let me show you something about that. Let's go ahead and turn off all of these other layers. And let's talk about how to track screens. All right, if you want to track a screen inside of Mocha, the best thing to do is to actually track the outer edge, okay? And then what we always do to check our tracks, let me just turn this mat off so you can see, is we always use our surface tool. Now our surface tool is really cool. It is the four corner pin um, export um, out of Mocha. What it does is it gives you an option to take the surface tool and translate it into any other um, program as either transform data or corner pin data. So in, um, in Mocha Plus what we do is we actually export our transform data as we can either do After Effects corner pins, we have a wide variety but usually you want to use the one that supports motion blur right here. Um, we also have After Effects transform data we have uh, Boris effects, center point, and corner pins. These are how you get the data into Avid. Final Cut basic, um, basic Motion, which is going to be your translation. Um, and Final Cut Distort, which is going to be your corner pins. Motion Basic Transforms, okay? And then Motion Corner Pins. So this is going to be your transform for motion and your transform, um, your corner pin for motion. So we're going to actually do After Effects Corner Pin, and we're going to copy this to Clipboard. What we're going to do is we're going to come back over to After Effects. And I'm going to, let's just comp this shot in on itself. I'm going to go ahead and drag our shot to the top here. And we're going to go to Edit, Paste. And what that will do is that we'll have our corner pin right here wherever we need it in our shot. I'm going to go ahead and knock this down to like a quarter res, though, so that this runs faster for the webinar. All right, so you can see that gets our corner pin data in very, very, very easily. It's important that you paste in on the first frame and that you make sure that all of your settings match between uh, Mocha and After Effects, so your frame rate, your aspect ratio, paste it on the first frame, and make sure that the aspect ratio of the object um, and the uh, size of the object that you are trying to apply your corner pin to is the same size as your comp. Um, if you have a, a non-regulation sized uh, image for that, you can always go to uh, Layer Transform and um, where is it? It's uh, fit to comp, okay? So make sure you use that uh, inside of After Effects. Now, another thing I want to talk about inside of uh, Mocha Plus. So if you notice with the free version uh, that comes with After Effects, we have, we have the Roto tools and we have the Corner Pen tools uh, that just go into After Effects in the free version. But what we don't have is we don't have the Lens tool. So let's talk a little bit about the Lens tool. And the Lens tool is um, it's basically something that uses a visual solve to try to uh, align a um, basically try to align a grid over the top of the object and then distort the grid based on what's happening to the straight lines in the shot. Let me show you what that looks like. And Martin, feel free to like chime in anytime um, if you have like something you want to add or you think I'm not covering or you think is a useful piece of information. Sure thing, I'm just rapidly answering questions over in the questions here. <laughs> oh, I'm sure. We have here this lovely shot um, that's a GoPro video. Now, one of the things about GoPro videos is that they're 
they're really nice, but they're also like really curved. So tracking data that's very curved, obviously the closer it gets towards the edge, the more warped it's going to be. And getting an accurate track um, in this without judging the lens is actually impossible. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually go to the beginning of the shot here. And we're going to tell Mocha to locate the lines in the lens tool that it thinks needs to be straight. Okay, so the lens tab does this really cool thing where we go ahead and we select in for new line and we connect the dots. All right, we select in for new line and connect the dots. In for new line, we connect the dots. All right, and basically what we do is we find a bunch of broken lines that need to be connected. Okay, and those broken lines will actually give us a, a good solve for how this should look, right? So what we're telling it is these lines should be straight, so do what you need to do to straighten out this shot. So we're just going to go ahead and uh, use a one parameter solve as opposed to a no distortion, which won't do anything. Uh, two parameters are going to be your fisheye, one barrel, um, I mean one parameter is your, your barrel distortion, single barrel distortion, two parameters fisheye. One parameter inverted, don't worry about it, it's proprietary um, for like, it's just a special request. Um, and then you'll never use it. Uh, anamorphic, you know, is self-explanatory. It's its own weird oblong sort of lens uh, distortion. But we're going to use one parameter, and we're going to hit calibrate, and it's just that easy. And now, when we turn our grid on, you will see that we have a nice grid that matches the curve of our shot. Now, we can do a couple of things here. We can export our lens data. We can just copy this to the clipboard. We can go over to After Effects, and we can paste it in. So over in After Effects, we're just going to go to our Lens Comp, right? What we're going to do is we're just going to paste this right back on. So what you end up with is this undistorted footage that you can either paste undistorted footage tracking data into. So you can either come here over to your, um, let's say we were trying to track this wall back here. So we can either take our corner pin and we can export our tracking data as undistorted, right? Remove lens distortion. And, or we can export our tracking data and not remove our lens, lens distortion and then we can add our curve over the top and it will fit with our comp. So let's just show you what this looks like with remove lens distortion. Come over here to After Effects and let's just go to like layer, new, solid, let's put like Let's just show you what that looks like. Let's make it red. All right, and let's just go to Edit, Paste. And now we have our undistorted corner pin right over our undistorted footage. All right, so that is the Lens Tool. Now, the cool thing about the Lens Tool is that, as you can see with our track here, our track now moves. Oh, by the way, Mary, um, yeah. uh, Andreas just uh, asked a question about the uh, long clip name support in the clip dropdown. Can you just quickly show that? Sure. Right now when we select the clips in the main clip to show in the main view, now when you drop down any clip selection, it will actually show the long name rather than a clipped name. So you'll be able to see your clips a lot easier. So these are just slight little improvements that help make things a lot easier when you're working with this kind of stuff. Absolutely. Um, yeah, no, we've we've made a lot of really nice uh, workflow improvements. So, okay, so we're going to actually uh, continue on, um, but I just want to show you that the uh, the tracking data does indeed move with the lens curve in a really nice way. Um, that's that's something that's a real benefit when you're dealing with a lot of these shots that are done with GoPro or done with uh, a lot of these run and gun sorts of DSLR shoots with like 50 millimeter lenses and stuff like that. Um, now. Let's move on to the camera solver. I want to see how I'm doing on time. Doing great on time. Wonderful. Okay, so the camera solver. Let's go ahead and open recent files here. I'll just open it. We're going to go to our 3D solver. And we're going to load this up. And what we're going to have here is we're going to have this, um, this shot of this, uh, well, it's the Internet, so we're going to have a cat in a box. Um, you're welcome, Internet. Um, and uh, this is the kind of thing that, like, let's say you need to do, like, some sort of fun comp for YouTube. I say YouTube because we have a cat. Um, or, you know, if you need to do any sort of serious visual effects work, um, you could still use this as well. Um, now, 
the way this is going to work is we're going to go ahead, and I've actually already tracked these, so we're going to track this, the fronts and sides of this box here, and you can see that I have my surface tools locked to the areas uh, that I want them to be locked to. And the smaller your surface tool, the better your track is going to be for right now. We're actually um, changing that in a later version, but for right now, the smaller your surface tool, the more accurate your saw will be. Okay, and what we're going to do is we're going to turn these 2D tracks, because right now, right now Mogi uses something that we call like a 2.5D solve. Now 2.5D means it's like pseudo 3D. Um, if you put it into, if you put 2D objects into a uh, 2D scene, you know, and you use our corner pins, they will look like they're moving in 3D, even though they're not. Okay, but what the camera solver does is it gives you a true 3D solve, and it gives you a solve for the corner pins um, that you have made, um, the tracks that you've made inside of Mocha. Now, because it's based on planar tracks, um, what it's not going to do is it's not going to give you like a full scene solve and give you the camera that shot the footage. Um, that's why we don't call it a camera tracker. We call it a camera solver. Okay, so the solver solves for planes. Okay, now. That means that you can hook anything you want up to these planes in 3D, and as long as they are relative to these planes, they will move properly in 3D space. So they're going to be wonderful for things like uh, inserting titles, uh, inserting particles, inserting 3D objects, inserting um, basically anything you want that can be attached to a section, uh, single, pl uh, single plane set extensions. What they are not going to be good for is your sort of Game of Thrones style complete set extension. Um, you know, unless you're really froggy and you do it plane by plane. Okay, so froggy is a very technical term. Um, all right, so the way this works is we're going to select our two layers that we need to solve for. Now, if I'm very lazy, I can just leave it on auto, and Mo Mocha will run through every version that it thinks uh, might, might work for this, and it'll go ahead and solve. But that takes a little bit of time. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually uh, go to large parallax change because... Basically, it's not a pan tilt zoom shot because pan tilt zoom shots are on a tripod, all right. And that tripod it uh, has a camera on it that's either panning, tilting, or zooming. Small parallax change is going to be like a landscape, okay. And medium to close up shots are going to be large parallax. So we're just going to go ahead and hit solve. Mocha is going to think about it up here, okay. And you can see that it, we're at 41% right now, but it'll give it a minute. And then it'll give me a solve down here. Now, I consider anything above a 90 to be a good solve. This is a solve quality of 99%. I'm feeling really good about that. Um, but the other thing I want to mention is uh, we don't just have to solve for still objects. Now, in order to get a camera solve, you do have to track objects that aren't moving. But if you need to do object tracking, you can also do what I did here and track this cat's eye, for instance. Okay, you can see that we've tracked this eye very nicely. All right. Now, if I need to export that eye into 3D space, I can do that as well. We just go to Export Camera Data, and we copy our After Effects 3D Motion Data, copy to the clipboard, and we just paste it into After Effects. All right, so over in After Effects, I'm going to show you a scene that we've already set up. We have here a 3D solver that we've hooked up some 3D text to. All right. So let's show you how we did that. All right, what we essentially did is we came over here, we went to Edit, Paste Mocha Camera, and then it will give us layers and nulls and a camera over here inside of our comp that we can then use to, um, to, uh, to connect things to. Now, I'm actually not going to use these, but I just want to show you that that is how it works. All right. Now, in order to get our text to orient correctly into our scene, I want to show you something right quick. You can see that under our under our transform data, okay, we have simply copied our transform data and pasted it from the null that we wanted to hook our data up to. So, as you can see, it moves really nicely in 3D space now, just from a simple taking the transform data, copying it, and pasting it onto our other object that we want to move in 3D inside of Mocha, okay? Now, you also have to make sure that the object is actually in 3D as well, so um, that's something to note. All right, so that's basically the overview of Mocha Plus. Um, if you guys have any questions, um, I'm happy to answer them at the end of this, but Mocha Pro remains the same. Uh, it has new features like stereo, and I'm going to let Martin actually take over um, from here.
So let me go ahead and minimize everything. And we're going to go ahead and okay. make Martin the presenter. Awesome. I'm going to switch over to Moto Pro and let's share the screen because that will help. Okay, let's go. So can everyone see Mocha Pro in the window here? Yes, I can. Excellent. So, as I said, I am streaming from Australia, so there will be a slight delay. Uh, so, uh, Mary, just feel free to interrupt me at any point, and we will jump in and show off this new stuff in Mocha Pro. So, Mary's just showing you Mocha Pro. Here currently I... Uh, sorry, Mocha Plus. I'm currently in Mocha Pro. And Mocha Pro is the expansion of Mocha Plus. It has a lot of new features such as the uh, remove tool, the stabilize tool, and the insert tool, but it also does uh, matte rendering, insert rendering, and exports out to a lot more products. So today I'm going to mainly focus on the new stuff, which is the stereo side. And first of all, what I'm going to do is show you how that stereo project is set up. And we'll just see what, how much time we've got here. Oh, we've got a good at least uh, half an hour, 45 minutes. So this will give us a nice long time. Oh, yeah, we have plenty of time. Through it. Yeah, excellent. So first of all, what I'm going to do is show you how that new stereo setup works. And we have just released a tutorial on the basics of this. And I'm going to go through now and talk about uh, specific streams and stereo workflow. So I'm just going to close this one for the moment. Let's just save that. So now when you start a new project inside Mocha Pro, and I'm just going to load up a file here. We'll come to uh, Tim Dashwood's files here. Tim Dashwood is a great supporter of our product. He's already given us a lot of great shots here. So I'm going to load up uh, my first clip here. So this is the left view for this stereo project. And the new tab that we've got in Mocha Pro is this Views tab here. So if I click this Views tab and select Multi-View Project, this is now setting it up to do stereo work. And we've got a left and a right, and you can name these to whatever you need. And we've also got setting the default hero view, because some people like to do their work from the right view, some people like to do it from the left. So we default to the left, because that's the most common. And we've also got these two colour tabs here. So these colours just define an outline around the edge of your screen, and just to help you know which current view you're actually in. So we've also made some other little improvements to the new project dialog, and these actually cascade over to Mocha Plus as well. The frame offset now has the option to set it to a fixed frame, which is uh, the default. In Mocha, uh, previously, we just had this either fixed frame or time code. And this new start frame actually reads from the files that you've got. So if you're working from, say, an 1001 uh, time frame, it will actually put 1001 in here. If you're working from a QuickTime file that has a time code embedded, it will actually stick the correct frame offset in here. And that's a very, very important change because often you've had to load in your footage and then set your frame offset, and now we can set it by default with that start frame. So I've set up my view here, and what I'm going to do now in Mocha Pro is use this Add button to add an additional footage stream. So I'm going to add to come down here, and we'll check the, get the other plate here, do, do, get the right clip. So I've got a left clip now and a right clip, and both of these clips we classify as something called footage streams, and they're going to go into a single clip so we can view them in left and right. So I'm going to just click OK, and we won't overwrite that. Let's just call this one a webinar. OK, so in here we now have our clip, and the 3D capabilities are up here in the view. So we've got a, the option to view in left and right, and you can see those left and right streams now working in the view. And we've also mapped those to the one and two keys on your keyboard. But you're able to customize those as well. So if I come up to my preferences, we can go to key shortcuts, and we can also customize a whole bunch inside here. Now Mary touched on this briefly when you can actually duplicate and change and create new profiles. So I can map it to a Nuke profile or an After Effects profile. But I can also go ahead and find whatever I need. So for example, if I wanted to change those views, 
I can come down to view and actually change the key that I actually use. And then it's, you can just duplicate your profile and save it out. So that's the new keyboard shortcuts. In the previous versions, we didn't have a lot in here, but now you can pretty much customise absolutely everything in that uh, interface. So even down to what you want to select and previews and so on. So there's a lot of different things you can now customise specifically, and then that saves out as a file to your preferences. So back to the stereo project. So let's just quickly talk about those stereo streams. So in Mocha Pro, we have now this thing called the footage stream. So we show you this in Mocha Plus, but we just don't give you these extra features because stereo is not supported in the Mocha Plus version. So we can add additional streams and they'll dump in here. And we can also relink individual streams by selecting a stream and then relinking it. And of course, we can remove it. This is important when you import things such as EXRs, which have uh, multiple views built into them, so you can have one, two, or even three or four views. You can then map those individual views to the view mapping section. So we have left and right here, and there's a left stream and a right stream. And this is all contained in the one clip. So I can select individual clips up here and then map lots of different clips inside one clip. So that's just the distinction. We have clips and footage streams that go inside those clips. So I'm going to load up a shot now to actually show the tracking. So here's another stereo shot. This one's from Dan Smith from the Dave School. So we've got this nice simple panning down shot here and we want to replace this sign over here. I'm going to do a basic track on this today. So again, we're dealing with a stereo shot here. And the main thing you'll notice here is that we're dealing with badly aligned and badly color corrected plates because this is the raw footage I'm dealing with here. And this is really important to note is that Mocha doesn't need those corrected plates to work with. You can actually track on badly aligned and badly corrected plates and it will still actually get that data out correctly. Um, but obviously you can use the clean plates as well. So I'm going to just start tracking this. And like always, we're going to come down to the end where we can find a good size to work with. So I'm going to track up here. Yeah, I'll just zoom in a little bit up here. So when you're doing stereo tracking, it's pretty much the same as when you do mono tracking. So we just select our tool, and I'm going to choose the X-Blind tool. And we'll draw a simple shape. We're going to grab this section just here. The reason I'm drawing it just here is because we have this massive pole coming in the way and we don't want that to get in the way. So I'm going to drag up here and I'm going to drag this up a little bit because I know there's more information up here that I can get later. So I'm just going to grab as much information as possible. So that's why we're making this shape a little bit taller. And we'll move that over a little bit. Okay. So and I'm going to track that in perspective. And let's just turn on the surface grid. And we're going to align that up to this sign here. So I'll select my layer, and we'll just line it quickly up to those corners, like so. And that's about where we need it. So at this stage, everything we've done so far is exactly what you would do in a normal mono track. But in stereo, what we have is this button down here called the Operate on All Views button. And when I click that, it's now going to tell Mocha to actually track not just the left view, but then work out how that left view is tracked compared to the right view and track both of them at once. Now, we don't have to actually track both views at once. We can actually turn this off and track one view and track the other view. But it's best to actually use this button because it actually helps Mocha work out how those views are moving between each other, and it gives you a much more accurate track. So I'm going to start tracking that now. So we'll start tracking backwards. So as we start to track, we can actually flip between these and you can see that it's actually locking on between left and right. And the reason it's doing this is because it's actually worked out how that perspective is changing between your left and right views. It's, it's actually tracking the parallax. That's right, exactly it. which is pretty dang cool. So, 
So what we're doing is we're, uh, when it's tracking, because it'll take a little while to get through uh, these few hundred frames, we're just going to quickly show you some of the other preview things. So while you're actually tracking, you can view in anaglyph mode using the 3D button up here. You can also view in interlace mode. If you have an active shutter monitor, you can also use that. Uh, on my MacBook Pro, I don't have it, so it's grayed out. And we also have something called the difference mode that actually lets you see between the left and right eyes and the actual difference in depth and uh, uh, convergence going on in the shot. And importantly, this is actually works per layer. So if you select a specific layer, it will tell you what the difference is between the views tracked at that point. And this is really good for lining up shots uh, using the stereo offset tool. So I'm just going to turn that off. And we're almost done here. And again, we can just keep checking left and right and see how that's looking. So the stereo is very, very transparent. Like You don't have to do that much more than you do right now using uh, a standard mono tracking technique. And you can easily adjust those both in stereo as well. This stereo workflow works across all of the different modules. So you can do stereo adjustments in lens tool uh, and the adjust rate tool. We can also do uh, camera solves in stereo and export out left and right views for FBX. We can also do lens inserts and uh, remove, and I'm sure I'm going to show the remove in a minute. I'm not going to show every stereo feature, but we will definitely show you the remove tool because uh, that's a fascinating area of stereo. So we've done our uh oh. And we can also see. I was going to say, we lost your audio yeah. for a second. Are you still good? Uh, no. No. Can you unplug your microphone and plug it, plug it back in? Yeah, sure. Yes, we are working on Martin's faded microphone right this moment. Uh-oh. We'll fix it. Okay, how's that? Way better. Welcome Yay, back. Hey, excellent. I do not know what happened there. Okay. So we've got a little bit of the edge here, so I'm just going to turn off this uh, layer here. So we can just move that surface over into that corner, and we'll just make sure that's looking okay. And I'm pretty happy with that. So we can easily bounce between the left and right views, and we can check that obviously using an insert clip, such as a logo, and make sure that that's actually looking correct in both of the views. So once we've actually got our stereo pair, what we can do now is export it out to our program. So I'm going to go back to just set that to none. So we can export out our tracking data as normal. And in Mocha Pro 4, we've got this new line called View. And for some programs, you can export out left and right. And other programs, such as Nuke, you can export out all views at once because we can copy those out to two nodes and then paste them out. So under Mocha Pro, we've got a lot more exports than Mocha Plus. So obviously we still have the standard Mocha Plus exports such as After Effects. Uh, but in Mocha Pro, we also have the Assimilate. Uh, we have Autodesk, which goes out to Smoke and Flame and Combustion still. We still support Combustion. Uh, we have Avid DS. We have Boris. Obviously, Boris is available also in Mocha Plus. Uh, Digital Fusion, Final Cut, as was in Mocha Plus and Motion. And then we have the new Nuke 7 tracker support. Uh, this was introduced into Mocha Pro 4, and I'm going to show that uh, in, in, in a minute. And we also have the standard ASCII and corner pins as well. And we also support Quantel for Pablo and the original Shake scripts, if you're still using Shake. And believe me, there some people still are. So I'm going to use, in this particular example, Nuke 7, and I'm going to export all views. Uh, and this lets it actually copy out both views at once, and then we can go over to, to Nuke. So I'm going to copy that to the clipboard, and let's come over to Nuke. So over in Nuke, we've already got our stereo shot set up, so I've set up my views for stereo, and we can see that in left and right, and we're still working with those raw plates. And I've also created a basic insert. I've got my Mocha logo as per usual. We always try to paste Procreate Beganda into all of our signs. So we've got our two tracker nodes. We just paste those in with copy, uh, control V, or command V, um, or obviously you can paste from the menu. And this brings in two nodes. We've got our left view and our right view. 
So let's have a quick look at that. So we automatically create four trackers uh, inside the tracker node inside Nuke, and we set it to left and right depending on which node you're currently in. So you can either define the tracker as a transform itself, we can set that up to be a match move or a stabilize, or we can use it uh, to export out a specific corner pin. And I'm going to export out the corner pin just because I want to corner pin it to this sign area. So let's just turn on our Mocha logo here, and I'm going to insert my corner pin. So I'm going to set up my left and export that out just using create. Oops, helps if I select my points and create that. And I'll just drag that into the left side here. And then I'm going to just go and map that to the right point in the shot. So that's the left view mapped. And I'm going to do the same with the right. So we'll just select the right, we'll select our tracker points, create what we need, hook it into our other side, and again I'm going to just map that corner pin to the right input. So now when we look in left and right, it's actually mapping across both views. And you can then just view, quickly view that anaglyph in Nuke by using the anaglyph node. So I'm just going to create an anaglyph node here. And we'll ramp up that color. And then that maps correctly to both views in the viewer. So that's the tracking for Nuke. And now let's have a quick look at how you do that left-right workflow inside After Effects. So I'll come back to my Mocha Pro. And we can export that tracking data out again. And this time I'm going to choose After Effects Corner Pin. And this case I'm going to choose the left view first and then I'll choose the right view. The reason we have to select views in this case is because there's not an easy way to paste the data between the left and right compositions in After Effects, so we have to export them separately for that to work correctly. So I'm just going to copy that to the clipboard and go over to After Effects, and we've got the same scene set up here. So if you're unfamiliar with the stereo workflow inside After Effects, you've got to set up a stereo control that maps to two different views, and I've got those down here as pre -comps. So I'm going to open up the first pre-comp and load in my logo. Let's just grab that from here. And then, as usual, we paste, and then that locks to the right point. And we'll do the same on the right. So once we select the right, I'm going to create my new logo in the right. Come back over to Mocha Pro, and export for that right view. And then we just switch back, paste, and then it's all mapped to the correct view inside. After Effects. So that's the tracking side, and so the tracking side is very, very straightforward. It's track, make sure you've got that operate on all views, and then that will map correctly between the views. If you need to do any offsets, you can actually do that inside the Stereo Offset tool. So when I'm in my left view, we can see that it's uh, sitting here in space. Now if I switch over to the right, I may want to just slightly offset it in the right view. So what I can do is turn on my difference mode and we can just use that positional data to actually alter where the right view is lining up and we can use that difference mode to make sure it's lining up correctly in the shot. And this was already lined up correctly but I'm just going to show you how that works. So we can alter that in Y and X and we can also even rotate it in shear and perspective. You'll only need tiny perspective changes uh, when you're doing this work and it's usually only useful if you've tracked only one view and then want to offset to the right. If you've already done the automatic tracking in both views, you probably don't need to adjust these stereos, but it's good to know if you have a particular workflow you want to work with, such as just tracking and rotoing in one view and then offsetting everything to the right, you've got that option inside Pro. So I'm just going to switch that off now. And we'll talk now about the roto. So I'm just going to turn off this tracking layout and we're going to roto out this sign here, because obviously this sign is going to be in the way. We do the pole as well, but I'm going to show the sign as a basic example. So I'm going to zoom in here. Now one thing interesting to note is, is that if we switch between the left and right views and we stay on the right view, if I select now my x spline, you'll see it actually pop back to the left view. And this is sort of a Mocha Pro failsafe to make sure that you're in the right view that you've defined as your hero view. If you want to change your hero view in project settings, you can. You can come up here and say change it to right. 
but we make sure that we reset you back to the left view before you start drawing so that you're in the view you defined as the beginning. So I'm just going to draw a shape around this sign here. Martin, I have a question for you. Um, sure. While we're while we're doing this, um, does Mocha use CUDA in the NVIDIA graphics card? Like no, that support will be coming. Okay, that's wonderful. I wasn't sure if it if it was there already or if it were just working on it. We're going to be improving, yeah, a lot of the performance and stability over the next few releases. Um, so at the moment, uh, we have a huge stability change in the program, so there's going to be a lot less uh, problems that you find as you go through the program. But we're adding additional graphic support as time goes on. All right. Well, thank you. So I'm just going to set up the surface. I don't need to really set up the surface in this instance because I'm doing just a roto here, but it's always good to set up that surface so you can see what's going on. So I'm going to track in perspective as normal, and we'll start tracking that with that operate on all views on. So let's just track backwards first. So when you're doing stereo roto inside Mocha Pro, the main thing you've got to think about is how the points are moving from left to right. And I'm just going to stop that track there because we don't need to do all of it. In fact, what I might do is go to the one I've used earlier so that we're saving a bit of time here. I'm going to just trash that and let's look at the roto I've got in this view. Let's just turn off my grid and my surface. So when you've actually tracked your roto, so here we can see we've got our nice roto track here and I'll turn on the mat for that as well. When you're doing stereo roto, what you need to work out is how it's offsetting from left to right. So we need to work uh, in both thinking about the left view and the right view, but then also how they're going to merge together when we comp it finally. So I'm going to select this view here. When we modify a point, when we do any sort of roto work in our hero view, in this case the left view, that is automatically changed to our right view because we've tracked that information already and that will offset to the correct point. So when we do any tweaking work, it's often best to actually work only in the left view first and make sure that all of your edges are looking really nice. And then we can cascade over to the right view and make sure that's looking correct. If there's still something that we want to tweak in the right view, we can then modify the right view but it's not reflected in that left view. And this is an important distinction because sometimes you're going to have things like organic shapes and things that are different from the right and the left. So you want to be able to make sure that what you change in the right view doesn't get reflected back into the left view again. And we can see this down here. If we look down here in the timeline, we've got this red keyframe pointing to the right now because I've created a specific keyframe for that right. And over here, you can see a hollowed out left keyframe because, and the reason it's hollowed out is because I'm not currently working in that view. And this is just another visual cue to make sure that you know which view you're currently working in. You can see the outline around here for my right view and the left view. Now if I switch back to that left view, you'll see my keyframe for the left is now operational and my right keyframe is being hollowed out. And again, that's just to make sure that you know what view you're currently working in, and it also helps the timeline when you're working so that you can say, I've got a keyframe on this view, but not in this view. So they're just some of the keyframe improvements for that. So I'm just going to undo that. And finally, what we have is this thing called apply keyframe changes to all views. And this obviously does what it says in the tin. If I actually modify in either view, you're going to see a keyframe generated for both, and if I move between my left and my right, you can see that it's sitting in the same spot in space. And again, that's very useful if you need to do some major tweaks across the board, but in general, we recommend working to that left to right kind of view. So I'll just undo that. So that's the main concept behind sort of the point workflow in stereo. It's a very, very simple process. So it, again, it means you're not having to mess with two separate splines. You're actually working with the same spline, but in two different views. So it means that your layout over here is a lot cleaner to work with. You're, you know you're only dealing with one layer, but it's dealing with two splines within that layer. And again, we can export that out to various applications. So I'm going to export first out to the shape data. 
So under the shape data, we have the same options here. We have the view, and we can choose left or right, and we can also choose to export all views. And I'm going to quickly describe the new shape data we've got in here. So Mocha Pro has, again, more options than Mocha Plus in terms of exports here. So we obviously export out to Premiere because that's the new format that goes out to Plus and Pro. And we have also additionally under here for Plus is Shape Data for AA and Final Cut. Uh, but for Pro, we've got everything else. So we've got G masks for Combustion and Flame. And these Flame G masks do go out to Smoke as well. And we have some improved Nuke formats here. So you can see we've got Nuke Roto and Nuke Roto Paint Basic. These are for anyone working in 6.2 or below because 6.2 and below did not have the option to support our planar transform data in the nodes. So these basic formats will put a keyframe on every frame, but that's just so that they take advantage of the tracking data that we export out to those older versions. So if you need to use an older version, you can use these basic formats. The new versions are just defined as transform and shape, and we've applied that to now the Roto Paint as well. Before it was only available for Roto, but now transform and shape is available for both those formats. So I'm going to use the Roto in this specific instance. And again, I'm going to choose export all views. So we can just copy that to the clipboard. And again, I'm going to go over to Nuke. So let's move over there. So over in this view, I'm going to create a new set of comps here just to make it a bit easier. I'm going to copy these over here. There's my left and my right. Oops. And I'm going to join these together. So we'll just select both of those and we'll say join. And then I'm going to, now obviously since I've copied those read nodes, I've cleared my clipboard, so I'm going to go back over to MicroPro and export that shape data right again. One zip, copy to clipboard. And I'm just going to paste that data to this new view. So I'm just going to close off all of this stuff here so we clear the viewer. And let's just paste that roto data in. So when that roto data comes in, you'll see it map to the view, and you'll see it switch between left and right. And if we look at our roto information here, what we have is a left view and a right view spline all in that same roto node. So this can combine down into one node that supports stereo without having to split it out between two nodes. And of course, you can go back and export out um, left or right if you want to work that way. But if you need to sort of combine down and join your views together, this is a nice way to actually paste between those views. So we can then obviously grab our alpha and do that. And then we can view that all in stereo. So if I map that to my anaglyph instead, We can see that working in the 3D mode. So it's very, very easy to paste those back and forth, the tracking data and that roto data. And we can do the same for After Effects. After Effects would work the same way. You would export out that shape data to shape data for AE. And again, we have that limitation of left and right for After Effects. So I would just copy that shape data to the clipboard, go over to After Effects, and then I could comp that in with this one. So for example, if I come in here, Let's just duplicate that, put it at the top, and paste in our shape data. Now that's sitting over the top in that view. And we would do the same in the right. So I'd go back to the right, export my shape data from the right, copy to the clipboard, duplicate my layer, put it over the top, and paste that shape data in. And now that will map correctly in that 3D view as well, because we've pasted in our left and our right shape data. So it's a very, very quick process, again, that copy-paste process that we've sort of put into Mocha Pro and Mocha Plus is a very, very nice way to get things across easily between those programs. So that's the main tracking and roto workflow, and we could also go through the stereo rendering for insert and the stereo camera solving, but I'm going to show you quickly now the remove instead. So I'm going to come up here and select a new project, so for those who are not familiar with the Remove tool, the Remove tool works by tracking the background 
and then using that background to remove foreground objects. So in this particular shot, which I've already set up, we've got the situation over here, and let's just brighten it up a bit so we can see what's going on. We've got this lady singing on a background, but we've got this sort of uh, poor black background coming over here, and we've got this guitar case sitting leaning up against the wall here. So what we want to do is get rid of that in the shot. Now, the first thing I've done is actually I've masked out the black bars uh, to stop them being part of my remove process, and that just cleans things up in the foreground. So I've just masked those out in the top. I've also tracked the background. So if I turn on my surface here, I've tracked that background just using a simple sh two shapes over here. So we've got this shape over here and another shape over here. And I've spread those out specifically just to get as much detail as possible. And this is also in stereo. So we've tracked in stereo. So the remove tool obviously works in both stereo and mono view. Now for what I've done here over on the left is I've done a small mask around the edge of to just cover that sort of little bit of guitar case over in this corner here. And if we go over to the right view, we can also see that we're seeing more of that than we were before. So with this tracking really helps you to cover in stereo both the left and the right and get that extra information that's happening in the shot. So because we're dealing with left and right views, we've got actually twice the amount of information that we have to remove. So in the remove tool, we can actually work off just one view and then use that one view to help remove the other view. So here, all I've done is create a single clean plate. Because this is sitting on the background here, we have to create a clean plate to paint that out because we can't see any background behind it. So I've just painted out a single clean plate inside Photoshop, and if we look at that in our clean plate here, let's find that frame 48. Oops. Was it frame 48? It was frame 48. Okay, it's not going to show for me. Oh, ah. Trust me, it's there. <laughs> yes, Mary. Oh, I, was, I was going to say uh, fun with demos. Um, yes. So uh, I've, I've had a couple of people say they've lost audio, but um, I think it got better. So uh, so let's just keep going. Uh, can everyone here still hear me okay? Yeah, it looks like they can. Okay, excellent. All right, so I've created that single clean plate for this one frame here, and I've only created it on one view. So I've created it on the right view to make sure I get as much information as possible for that area over here. So we can see we're getting more information over here. So I've chosen the frame that shows the most of the bit that I need to paint out. So if we look in the left view, you can see that's obscured, but in the right view, we get a lot more. So that's why I've painted out the right view only. So then I can use that single right view to only render out both at the same time. So we don't need to create two separate clean plates. We can actually do it across all the frames and all the views just using that one clean plate. Now, if I play this shot back, you can actually see there's a lot of flicker in this shot. And this would be a real pain to actually go and relight across all of those uh, different frames. So what we have is this illumination modeling. And I've set it to interpolation, which actually detects how that lighting is changing per frame and then adds it back into the clean plate to remove that area correctly. So let's just start rendering that now. And again, I'm going to render all views. This all views button is across all of the modules now in Mocha Pro. And if I don't select this, it will only render the current view I am on. So I'm going to select that one now. And you can see down here we've got this option called prefer same view. And I have it specifically turned off because I want Mocha to make sure it checks both views for that clean plate. If you turn this on, it will only look for the current removing options in the view you're currently in. And if it can't find enough, then it will check the other view. But this is just a little performance enhancement that you can turn on if you don't want it to be checking all views at all times.
So I'm going to start rendering backwards. And this will take a little while, but then it cleans that up and puts that clean plate in place, but also adds that additional lighting that's changing across the shot. And if we just let that render for a little bit, I'm going to render that, let render, oh, excuse me, let that render out a little bit, and then we'll play back a little bit and show you both those views. So this remove tool is quite powerful because it used to just work in one view and then work out that lighting change and then remove everything according to the background. But now you can do it across one view and make it cascade across all your views when you're working in stereo. So it's a very, very powerful workflow that you can work with that saves a heck of a lot of time. Okay, so we've got a little bit, you can see that coming back in because I've not rendered this section here. But we can see how well that lighting is coming back in. And I'll just turn off my layers here so you can see that a bit better. So we can see how well that lighting is working. And if we look in the other view, it's actually translated across really, really nicely. So if I look in stereo, let's turn on our anaglyph stereo here. We can see that translates across really, really nicely. And we're not getting any pops or edges or anything like that. And if we look at the original, we can see how that's coming back in and is cleaned up correctly. So that's how the stereo remove tool works. It's how the remove tool works across all things, but this is a specific stereo example. And you can show you how much power you can get out of just getting that remove done. So they're the main things I was going to show in the stereo side. And uh, if we have any questions, we can start opening it up now. Um, there's no other specific things I was going to show for the stereo side. Um, but if you have any questions specifically about Mocha Pro or Mocha Plus, you can start to ask Mary and I now. Absolutely. Um, basically, uh, at this point, we're in the Q&A part of our demo. So if you have any specific things that you need to hear about, um, we'll go over that. Um, so one of our first questions is, uh, you made a clean plate uh, frame to fill mm -hmm. the gap, and the illumination model modeled the lighting of the scene. Uh, did yes. you get that right? Yes, absolutely. So you can see here, if when I'm scrolling through this clean plate, how that flicker, it may be hard to see where I've rendered one frame here and not, so let's just render that one to fill that gap. So with, what's happening is here is it's putting that clean plate back in and then working out how that light has changed from frame to frame. We have a couple of different things inside that uh, remove module. One is the linear mode, and linear is when you've actually got a specific linear change in light. So if there's a gamma change or someone's turning their face from left to right and the light is just shifting over time, you would use linear. And linear is a lot faster than the interpolated mode. What interpolated mode does, it will actually check every frame and work out how that light is changing. And this is very important for a shot like this where you've got horrible flickering light going on which can really screw up your comp. The lighting module just really helps with that interpolated rendering. Well, it's also important to point out that the interpolation, sorry to interrupt, but it's important to point out that the interpolation mode actually changes the data inside of the shape differently. Um, the linear mode actually lifts the data and the shape up and down in, in a very linear way. It's HSV, like hue, saturation, and value, and it brings it up or down um, just based on uh, the surrounding pixels, but, but it does it in a uniform way, so everything in the shape changes. But if you if you use interpolate, it actually changes across the shape. So if you have a light side on one, of the sh on one side and a dark side on the other, it'll actually blend between the two, um, and that's, that's really powerful. Absolutely, yeah. And you can see that actually if you do something like a flood fill. We have a flood fill option here, which will actually demonstrate that uh, in the interpolated mode. And flood fill is actually quite useful if you just need to uh, remove something behind something you're going to be compositing, and you just need to fill in with color. So you don't often use the flood fill unless you've got something to composite back on top. So the uh, the none mode obviously sets it to be uh, illumination only. Uh, sorry, and no illumination at all. And this is actually quite useful in many situations where you've got, say, basic sunlight or very, very clean light, and you don't actually need any specific lighting shifts in the scene. And none is the best option to start with because it's also the fastest. When you're doing any illumination modeling, it does slow things down a lot, but it saves you a heck of a lot of time actually comp comping it in later. Absolutely. 
Absolutely. So, um, you know, we uh, we touched on the, the 3D solver um, in the beginning, um, but we actually have a user that wants to see the 3D solver again because they missed the front. Um, do you have do you have any sort of different 3D uh, solves that we can show, or should I show one of mine? Um, I, I can show a basic uh, 3D example using the stereo. Um, let me just open one up. Do, 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 do. Stereo. So let's grab this one here. Okay, so this one is a, a 3D solve we've got here. So we've tracked our, and you can see this is the same shot we've used from uh, Dan Smith. It's the same uh, series that he uh, gave us, which is awesome. Thanks, Dan. So we're tracking the ground here. And you can see here we've got a surface set up down here. We've got the four points. And we've also tracked the background here. So we've tracked this area here. So when you're doing a camera sole, you just select both of those layers and then those two layers will work in tandem to actually calculate the depth in the shot. You can generally only uh, track with one layer when you're working on a pan tilt zoom shot, but when you need to actually do a situation where there's uh, any kind of parallax, you do need those two layers so that Mocha knows how deep the shot is going and how that camera is moving. So you, that's the basic rule to take away. One layer for pan tilt zoom, two layers or more for any kind of parallax. So I'm going to select camera solve. Now in Mocha Pro you'll see a lot more options here because I am again dealing with a stereo shot. So you can see I'll just move between Although how sexy is it, is it that it solves in stereo for 3D? Oh, it's fantastic. It's, uh, so what we can do is either choose to solve this for one view or both views. So I'm going to select my large parallax because we've got a large foreground and background motion happening here. And I'm going to leave the focal length about the same. The focal length is actually pretty good there, 35 to 70 millimeters. And we can also tell Mocha what kind of stereo mode we're working in. So here we can see a slightly converged shot, so I'm going to set that. And we can tell it to adjust for vertical alignment as well. And this is an uncorrected plate, so I'm going to check that as well. So I'm going to click Solve, and then it'll go through and solve that. I'm getting a pretty good, 99% is pretty good. So we're going to click Export Camera Data. So under the Stereo Tools, we've got, again, the same thing that we had before. We've got Views for Left and Right. If we specifically select FBX, we can actually choose Export All Views because we support Stereo Data in things like Maya. Um, and it will go out to uh, any sort of program that supports Stereo FBX. Uh, and at the moment, we've only tested Maya, but if you've got a program that also supports that, it will work for there. So we can also choose After Effects 3D Motion Data, and again, we have that limitation of left and right. And FBX for Nuke as well. Nuke doesn't support Stereo for FBX, so you do have to do left and right as well. So I'm going to show here After Effects. Let's just copy that to the clipboard. And we'll go back over to After Effects, and I'll load up a project. One sec. Do, do, do. Okay, so here we have that shot. And what we're going to do is just come up here to Edit and Paste Mocha Camera. And then that will paste in our nulls. So we've got all of our nulls here in the view correctly. You may need to flip them because Mocha doesn't know the orientation here, so these currently are pointing down, so you could put them up if you want to, but the position and the rotation and scale is all correct. And you can see specifically here we've got one set of features. What we want to do for this left view is now go back and export out for the right view and do both. But for the purposes of this, I'll just show you the left view. So then we can map that to the views that we need. So if I look in the custom view here, we can see how those are mapping out to the file. So if I hold down my C key to rotate the camera around, you can see how those are projected in space correctly for that shot. So we've got our ground nulls here and those back wall nulls here. And then if we scrub the timeline, you'll see that camera pan around those correctly. So that's how that data format gets out from the camera solver into After Effects. We're defining that camera from those planes and then projecting them in space with the correct nulls. And this works the same for Nuke uh, or any FBX format as well. You get those FBX nulls and an FBX camera. All right, wonderful. Well, 
I um I think we are almost running out of time. Um, I uh, actually I'm going to somebody wanted to know if we could show that in hip film, but I think I'm going to actually direct them to the tutorials on our website. You know, can you load up our website for a second and show people um, our videos section? We have tons and tons and tons of free training um, online. Do do do, imagine systems. Oh, one thing I actually I, I forgot and we should probably do before we wrap up is show you Python. I am sorry, I completely forgot to show you that. So right. Python support is available inside Mocha Pro. Mocha Pro's uh, Python module works by importing a specific Mocha module. Now for those, who, those of you who are not uh, Python savvy or not interested in the Python section, I will be running through this very, very quickly. So uh, stay tuned if you need to know any more info. So the way Python works inside Mocha is that you run the Mocha Python um, interpreter and it will load specific things for controlling at the moment project management and layer management, but we're going to be adding a lot more to Mocha Pro over time. You can currently do remove rendering inside Python, you can do layer control, you can do uh, things little project management things like where the clips are going, relinking clips, adjusting frame ranges, all that kind of fun stuff. So it's a very, very simple process to define file paths and then reset them to what we need. In this particular example, what I'm doing is taking a project and adding a prefix to everything. So we'll have a quick little bit of shot here. We'll load up this one here. So this shot's from one of our earlier um, NAB demos, and we have a lot of layers here. And say, for example, your studio decides that they need to prefix this with something specific so that we can export it out in the, to the next part of the pipeline. It would be a real pain to have to go through and do every single uh, additional rename across this whole shot. So what you can do instead is use a Python script now to actually do that for you. So in this particular example, all it does is adds a prefix to every layer that you determine on the command line. So I'll just switch, the, switch over to the command line. So what we can do is, let's just load that up. So we load up our script here. We've got, we define our project that we want to change and the prefix that we want to add to the front. So I'm adding demo underscore to each one of my layers. And if I just press return now, what it's going to do is process that uh, Mocha file and go through and change all of those names. So you can see here it's actually changed head to demo head, etc, etc, etc. So now if we go back to Mocha Pro and open up that file, let's find it in the list here. It actually adds all of those to the front. And so this is one of the ways you can use Python, but there's many, many others, especially for things like version control into shotgun, and lots and lots of different ways to actually modify and change groups, layers, and search for things within those things. But Python is going to be expanded a lot over time. You can check the actual reference under here. So we've got our offline Python guide, which tells you how each individual class works and how to set each one. So it's more of like a quick mini tutorial. And we've also got the online Python docs. Let's just load that up here. And we've got the reference documentation here, which just takes you through every single class, its variables, and how that all works. So that was a very, very quick overview of Python. If you have more information required on that, just go to the website and check out those Python docs. You can go here to find more on the Python if you don't want to do it from Mocha directly. But we've got lots of training and documentation support right on the website. All right. Well, wonderful. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, check out our website. Our website is www.imagineersystems.com, um, and we have forums on our website. Uh, they're back up. We are super excited about that. Um, <laughs> we also have a uh, contact support. We have a support FAQ, uh, frequently, frequently Asked Questions. And that actually covers most of the questions that we run into on a day-to-day -day basis. So if you find that you're stuck and you don't know why you're stuck, uh, the fact is a good place to start. Go to the forums, contact support, or 
go to our wonderful videos section and see everything we have to offer. Um, we're going to wrap this up because we're running out of time, but I am Mary Poplin. I am Imagineer Systems Product Specialist. Martin Brennan is our wonderful product manager, and he's been demoing here for you for the, for the last half of this demo. Uh, we really appreciate you tuning in. One of you is going to win a license of Mocha Pro, so uh, good luck to all of you, and I hope that you have a wonderful day. Thanks very much, guys. I'll talk to you soon. All right. Bye.